Adrian, how are you doing today? Uh, all right, man. So let's just get into it. Um, I, I'm wondering, uh, like before we we get into like the actual movie, like what was your relationship with, uh, like with the original 2003 Wrong Turn movie before you got uh, attached to this reimagining? Oh man, so Wrong Turn was actually, it came out when I was about like 10 years old, so it was one of the first horror films I'd ever seen in my life. (laughs) So I remember watching it with my dad and being absolutely horrified. Like it scarred me. I I remember the scene where they're like chopping up a body on a table and I was just like, oh my God, like mind blown, scared for months, had nightmares forever. And then I got wrong turn on my desk, and I was like, oh, my God, is that the movie that scarred me all of these years? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's ironic, uh, you know, wrong turn seems to be kind of at the tail end of this trend that's been happening in horror since the new millennium, where we're taking all of these classic properties, like Texas Chainsaw, Friday the 13th, Nine on Elm Street, and we're re- imagining them for a new generation and wrong turn kind of came at like the mist of when that fascination with reboots and everything were starting to happen and before you read the script did you kind of like think that it was going to be like a uh a reboot or like something in the vein of like halloween or scream where it's they're making a sequel to the original film i uh, i didn't really have a preconceived notion on what it was Fair. maybe i know that they told me that it was going to be a reboot um that was like the main thing it was like wrong turn slash reboot that was that's what came up on my desk and i was like okay cool so I was really curious on what a reboot entails. You know, sometimes we see movies that they say it's a reboot, but it's a complete exact same thing, you know, or you see a reboot and it's something completely new. So I wasn't quite, like, quite sure what to think about it until I had read the script, you know. And then once I read the script, I saw that they just, they took the body of Wrong Turn, gutted it, and then kept the skeleton of, what wrong turn is you know we we did get rid of some of the things but we also added in like new ideas new like fresh takes on what horror could be and i think that's what really excited me about the movie and i'll be honest like i'm not the the biggest fan i'm going to get crucified for this i'm not the biggest fan of the original 2003 version um i i thought it was it, it was all right like I understand, like, the appeal and, like, the cult following that it's acquired in the the 18 years since its release, and it's really interesting about this movie, there's a relationship that carries over from the original one, Um, the original screenwriter comes back to to do this one, and I think what, what, first off, I I really, really love this new reimagining, um, (laughs) <laughs> I was so surprised by how modern it, it felt in, in terms of not only um, some of the characters with, you know, having a LGBT plus uh, set of characters that are in a relationship, um, but also making the females more uh, well-rounded and... Yeah. Uh, really developed like they didn't feel like final girls I think one of my favorite um, scenes is uh, in the bar where you're you and the group that we follow throughout the course of this film gets called um, like hipster and uh, there's a character that just kind of breaks down why they're not Um, and it's it's one of the most refreshing sequences and and so it's interesting uh, now that the film's getting ready to be released on onto Blu-ray and more people are, are having access to seeing it. Those that have seen it have uh, kind of mad that the film is like a complete 180 right. reimagining. Um, and I'm just kind of like, for, for someone that's actually involved in the production, how did you feel about 
uh, the bold new direction that Alan ended up going when he wrote the script. I honestly love the new direction. I love that we have a really awesome female lead. You know what I mean? That isn't just like a helpless lead. It's just like a hardcore knows what she wants lead. You know what I mean? She's really well-rounded. I love that the characters are like fresh and intelligent. You know, they're not just some, like teenagers like doing seances in the woods and getting caught up for it. It's like, you know, it's like really intelligent characters going through a horrific situation and it represents everybody. You know, we, anybody who watches the film can find representation in a film. And I think that's special. You know, we don't always get to see that. And it's not in a, like, a way that it's, like, in-your-face, political, like, this is how it should be. It's just, like, it reminds everybody that everybody is part of the story. You know what I mean? So I, I really love that. You know, I, I know it's getting mixed reviews. You know, at the end of the day, some people don't like change. And yeah. at the end of the day, the film is changed. It's not the original film. It's new and fresh, and, you know, there's new ideas. Yeah, you guys got a, a four out of five from me, from the, for just, just to kind of put it in perspective where I land it with, uh, with our review. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been telling people to kind of go in with an open mind. It's, it's definitely yeah. not the wrong turn you know, but it's a improvement. Um, and it, it uses a lot. I think one of the things that I, I really liked about it is – um, one of the things that I, I noticed in kind of exploring some of the wrong turn sequels was how formulaic it gets and how the that quote unquote formula for wrong turn is almost used as like a meta joke throughout the right. the course of the uh, the film and um, I love that you you talked about how there's a lot of representation. Everybody can see themselves within these characters. And it's surprising, and this is kind of a, a minor spoiler, but it's surprising to me too about how long, um, how many time we spend we spend with these characters. Um, right. it, you spend two full acts before the, the horror and the dread of the antagonist element that I'm not going to spoil uh, really starts to kind of become a more predominant narrative feature. Right. Yeah, you know, I really love, you know, we figure out who these characters are, you know what I mean? It's not, I love the approach that Mike, you know, that he slowed everything down, you know what I mean? We get to know the characters, so when horrific things start to happen, we care, and we understand that that character is a human being like human being feeling things you know what i mean so i think that was such a beautiful approach actually you know i think in the formula of the previous films we're chasing the gore you know what i mean we we're looking for the next carnage candy scene where with this new approach to it you know we really care about the characters and you know we're dragged into situations where it's just like Instead of being like, yeah, kill him, it's like, uh, whoa, should I be watching this? You know what I mean? You see like a real fleshed out character going through something horrific. Yeah, and I'm wondering if you, you know, we've talked a lot about the, the movie, and I'm wondering if you can kind of talk about your character and, and um, kind of how you got in touch with fleshing him out. Because uh, we don't, we do spend a lot of time with him, but like I said, there there's about six other characters five other characters that are fighting for the attention of the viewer. And I'm wondering if you can just kind of uh, spend a couple minutes talking about your character and your process for getting into the headspace of him. So when I approached Louise, uh, I had done the script and, you know, we, we really see, uh, he's a guy from New York, you know what I mean? He owns bistros, he's LGBTQ. He knows where he's at. He's in an area that might not be open to who he is as a human. So he's very in line. You know, you don't see him stepping out of line. You see him, like, kind of, like, quiet, reserved. He's just there for the trip. And, you know, as things kind of, like, jab at him, you know, we we see, like, 
uh, some of the locals, they kind of notice that he's gay, and he just, like, puts it away. He hides everything. He, like, guts everything, you know, and he guts everything down and down and down, and it, it essentially turns into a ticking time bomb. And once he hits tragedy, you know, we see him explode. We see all of the scary, ugly parts of Luis coming out. And as an actor approaching that, you know, it's definitely tough, you know, it's like, how do I approach it in the most realistic way? The worst thing that you can do is like, just try to cry on cue and, you know, it doesn't mean anything. So the way that I approached it and me and Mike had talked was like finding the horrors within my own life. You know, most of us have never been through anything that Luis goes through and I hope they never do. But, you know, finding like the little things in life that scare you or make you feel a certain way and then magnifying them to a much larger scale to meet the character of Luis and give Luis a real life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad that you touched on the 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 fact of kind of how he interacts with the, the town in um, West Virginia and kind of how he's perceived, how him and his partner are both perceived uh, you can tell that it's a very old-minded town, um, and that, I would argue, also equally makes um, those characters some of the most important socially um, commentated characters to have within the, the film. No, I definitely agree. Uh, as far as you know, fans reaching out. A lot of people are finding representation and feeling seen in the film, and I think that's so special. I don't think it's often that horror films have the opportunity to have that platform to represent so many people, and I think it's really special. Yeah, absolutely. And I I feel like I'm running out of time. I don't know. Um <laughs> So we're gonna. I want to do one last spoiler uh, question. So this is your official spoiler warning. If you haven't seen Long Turn, pause the interview right now. Go check it out wherever you guys get your movies from on all major digital platforms. Uh, what was your reaction to kind of how your character ended his journey throughout this film? Oh, man. Yeah, the eyes burning out, the eye pokers. Man, I remember reading that. It was absolutely insane. In the original script, the sentence to darkness was actually burning eyes out, burning ears out, and then cutting out his tongue. So <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, how in the world, like, how do you reach that point, you know, to make this the most realistic? But, man, Mike really just, like, coached me through it, and we were able to find something that was so guttural to invite the audience into that horror so instead of being like yeah burn his eyes out it was like whoa should i be watching this this is actually a really horrific thing that's about to happen yeah he uh louise actually pops up later in the film uh when matthew modine's character finally connects with um his daughter and i gotta say like it, it it's a classic jump scare moment but it caught me off guard. I was like, oh, oh, what is going on here? And then music hits, and it's like, it's Louise. How terrifying. I know. That moment of, like, Louise. And then it's just, like, in the script, it was, you know, Jen sees him, and she doesn't want him to suffer, so it's a mercy kill. And I'm like, oh, brutal. Yeah. It's uh, it is kind of sad, but, you know... um. I, w I seriously want to encourage uh, listeners right now, please go check out Wrong Turn 2021. It is one of the best horror movies that have been uh, released this year. I know that says a tall order because we're so, so young into this new year, um, but it is one of the best that I, I've come across. And in order to truly appreciate this film for what it is, you guys are going to have to go in with an open mind and a divorce from the source material because this film has a lot to say and it's got some great gags and great characters. Just go check it out. It's available now wherever you guys get your uh, films, both physically and digitally. Um, Adrian, thank you so much for your time and, and talking about Wrong Turn. Of course. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. All right, man. Well, you guys, we'll see you guys on the uh, 
in the universe. Adrian, have a great day. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. See you.